We saw in the previous video an example where Newton's method works well. Here let's see an example where it works less well. So I'm going to, instead of starting at negative 1.5, where I started in the previous video, here I'm going to start at negative 0.5. And so why is this going to be worse? Well, this cubic only has one root. Okay, it's over here around negative 1.7. And when I start at negative 0.5, Newton's method it draws the tangent line, and then it asks, where does that tangent line cross the x-axis? It looks like it crosses over here, maybe around 1.5. Okay, so it's moved further away from the actual root. And then at 1.5, we're going to draw this tangent line, see where the tangent line crosses the x-axis, and we're going to wind up somewhere like around here. And we're not converging at all on the actual root. So, so let's actually see this in practice. So I went z equals negative 0 0.5 is where we're going to start. And again, we're going to do Newton's method three times. Okay, so I'm just going to say reps equals three. And our array, I'm going a little fast because this is the same as what I did in the previous video. We'll start out with reps plus one. So it holds our negative 0 0.5 and then the three like recursive outputs of Newton's method, the first three of those outputs. And so let's put z in here. So we put arr bracket zero equals z. And then for i in range reps, we'll do arr i plus one equals newt, okay, which I defined up here, okay, z minus f of z over f prime of z. So the next thing in ARR is going to be newt of the previous thing. And uh, let's check it out. So for example, if I do newt of 1.8, what should I see? Well, I should see exactly this value. Okay, good. So this seems to be working correctly. And so let's just look at, at where they are. So we started over here as our estimate for the root. And then we wound up over here at 1.8. Then we jumped back here to 1.2. So I guess my estimate was pretty off for where the, where the tangent line was going to intersect. And then, then we got 0 0.7. And just to see it a little better, let me add these tangent lines to the graph. So let me copy this. Okay, so I'm going to kind of combine these cells. Let me copy this. And so for each step through the for loop, okay, each of these, what I'm doing is I'm starting at, out at some root estimate, and then I'm finding where does the tangent line at that estimate cross the x-axis. So let's actually draw in those tangent lines. And so to do that, I'm going to write a function complicated enough that I'm not going to use a lambda function for it. And we'll say the input is x0, how about? So think of that as we're finding the tangent line at x0. And so I'm going to describe the tangent line as a function. So we're going to return a function. So for example, if we start at, the, at x0 equals negative 0.5, then I want the output to be, what is the equation of this tangent line? They thought of as a function. So like if it's y equals mx plus b, what is that mx plus b function? Okay, and so what is it? Well, the slope is the derivative at x0, so df of x0, okay, where I define df just by hand up here. And then it's supposed to cross through x0, f of x0. So this is going to be times x minus x0, and then plus f of x0. And again, I went a little fast through that, but it's just the same equation for a tangent line as you learned in calculus. Okay, so this outputs a function. OK, good. And now I want to plot all of these functions. So uh, let me just copy this x.plot. And so x's, they can stay the same, that's fine. But then the y's, 
that is supposed to be tang of x0. So this is a function evaluated at x. And then the only thing I have to do is say, what is x0 supposed to be? Okay, well, that is like our root estimate. So that should actually be this ARR bracket i. Okay, so for example, when i equals 0, this ARR bracket i is negative 0 0.5. And then I'm finding the equation of the tangent line at negative 0.5. I'm finding the function that represents this tangent line. Okay, and then when i equals 1, then ARR bracket i is 1.8. And I'm finding the function that represents the tangent line at 1.8. Okay, and let's see if I managed to do this without making a mistake. Okay, great. And now only thing I want to do is I want to zoom in a little bit. So let's zoom in. The x's probably don't have to be zoomed in as much, but let's at least go negative 1 to, to 2. And so I'm going to do this using, using the same, same syntax as we set the title. So ax.set, but instead of saying title equals, we're going to say xlim equals. And then I'll give a tuple. So let's go negative 1 to 2. And then y is where I really want to zoom in, because I don't want to go from negative 25 to 5. So let's zoom in to how about negative 2 to 3. And I'll, I'll increase that 3 if I need to. Okay, great. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just increase it slightly, like to 3.5. So this blue curve is the, is the original function f. Okay, this orange curve is our first tangent line. And let's also draw in where do these tangent lines cross the x-axis. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say ax.plot. So, for example, I want to get, like, this point here. And what is this point? Well, that is exactly the same ARR i plus 1. That's the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate is 0. All of these are going to lie on the x-axis. And then I need some way of saying that it should be uh, made as a point as opposed to a line, which is usually what it tries to do. And so the way I can say that is it's very similar to the abbreviation from MATLAB. I can say KO. The K stands for black, so all of these points are going to be in black. And the O says draw a circle there, or draw a disk there. Okay, so what, uh, what happened? We started at negative 0 0.5. We drew the tangent line. We found, where does that tangent line have a root? And that was around this 1.8, or I guess it was exactly 1.8. Then we repeated the procedure. This green line is the tangent line at 1.8. Then we see, where does this green line cross the x-axis? It crosses it here, which is at approximately 1.25. And then we draw the tangent line at that 1.25. And then we find where does that tangent line cross the x-axis? And it crosses here at 0 0.71. Yep, and this looks like it's about 0 0.71. And if I haven't made any mistakes, I should be able to run this even more times just by changing this reps. So let's go to 10 reps. And you can see that doesn't seem to be converging on anything in particular. It seems sort of random how this is looking. Whereas if I start at a better value, okay, so let's start back at our previous negative 1.5. Okay, and I'd better change these x limits. So let's go negative 2 to negative 1. And I mean, you can barely see most of these because they're getting so much closer and closer to this actual root. So this is an example of what happens for a good value, a good starting value of z. 
And this is an example of what can happen for a bad starting value. Maybe I'll show you one more that's kind of cool. Let me start at zero instead of starting at either of those other values. And oh yeah, so I should go to, let's say, negative two to two. So it looks like there are only two lines and what is happening? Well, let's look at ARR. Somehow it's amazing how perfectly this works out. Newton's method is just perfectly oscillating between zero as our estimate and one as our estimate. And these are very far from actual roots. For example, if I apply the function f to ARR, so I'm hoping the outputs are close to zero. Okay, but the outputs are exactly two and exactly one, just repeating over and over again. Okay, that is enough for this video. Thank you for watching.